Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the finale. Ooh. We're so super excited. Welcome. We're having a, a live recording. We're out at Cuisino in Melrose. We're super excited about this one. It is our final season, and that means that we're going big, or else we're going home. Yeah, and we're not yeah. going home and today. So home let me reintroduce home. myself for the last time. My name is Tebby. I'm TJ Black Velvet. Church Girl is here. And we've got a very special guest who we've been hyping for the entire week. We're so excited to have you here today. Introduce yourself. Uh, thank you very much for having me, ladies. I am very excited to be here also. And my name is Antu Babalo Funda Kamaboza. And I am feeling like, you know, I'm in the right place. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's, That's good. You're definitely in the right place. We do encourage comments. We always do encourage comments here on the podcast. So if you go on to um, the videos, you can definitely, we live chat as well. And you can also just send through your comments. But today, because we have a live audience, we're encouraging the ladies and the gents who are here as well to take the mic and also just be part of the conversation. It's an open conversation. It's a conversation that's going to happen for an hour. Yeah. So, for all those who always are in the comment section saying to us that, can this be longer? Can this be longer? It's longer, number one. So, please commend us for that. Number two, there's a we table. Have a table. <laughs> <laughs> You've been Give reading us, us for filth when it comes to that. So, for those who don't know who Babala is, let's start there. You know, you're going to be our panelists for today, part of our conversation today. I think it's only fair that the ladies know who this person is who's sitting on the table. Well, I sit with a number of heads that are very far. Uh, thank you so much. You know, when you're not used to these things, you have to, you have to get a little bit of correction here and there and guidance. But anyway, I come with a lot of different heads. But the one that I'll be wearing today is that I am going to be an educational sexologist, a very beautiful topic uh, that I'm just going to be steering because I promise you half of the people that are sitting here today, I have a feeling they are practitioners. So when you talk about practice... <laughs> So when you talk to practitioners, the world of what of whatever topic that you're going to be bringing that makes it very easy. Yeah. 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 Ladies, how are you feeling about today and, and the conversations we're going to be having? I'm excited and nervous at the same time because you're busy, like thing. We are very busy. <laughs> <laughs> not so much church girl, though. No, definitely not me. <laughs> Look, um... You have to, this is an open space. It really is open for anyone. There's no judgment that's happening here. For those who have high body counts, those who don't have high body counts, you're really encouraged to join in the conversation. And we're going to have Madame Speaker who's going to be coming in as well. She's running a bit late, but I think these are conversations that are very important. And if you join in on the live on Wednesday, what, Tuesday? And Wednesday. on Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. We had two, remember? We had two lives. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, anyways, the lives on the podcast and chill conversations or the, the, the page, you will see the conversations that we're having and the conversation we're going to open up. And I think the conversation that we're going to open up or start opening up today is whether or not women... <laughs> There's a lady who's already telling me what the time. She's like, let me tell you what it is. Whether or not <laughs> we inherit sexual energies. Can she introduce the topic for us? Actually, we want you to introduce Please. the topic. Can a roving mic start with Whoa. you? You're right. Yes. yes. Introduce Whoa. the topic for us. What your are we your friend knows. Your friend there at the back. So start by who you are and, of course, start the conversation. But, but it was you in the green, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. My name is Sivio Jack. Uh, very picture and yeah I know oh I know the body count um, topic <laughs> <laughs> me I've had yeah my fair share of my people so yeah this is a topic I wanted to be included in yeah okay. so because I know you yeah, very yeah much about it and look we don't even want to make it a body count thing because I almost feel like that has a stigma attached to it mm -hmm. It's the spiritual energies that we have. And the funny thing is whether or not you've slept with one person, you also inherit a whole lot of sexual spirits. I love when people say, I've only slept with five people, I've only slept with two people. But how many of those two people slept with? Right, ladies? Mm. That's why I'm a church girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
And by the way, what we're really going to be unpacking today has got nothing to do with whether you church girl or not, because what we are trying to do is that we need to, ma how do we maximize ourselves, looking at where we come from and where we are and where we are going, and what plans do we have, and how do we, maybe what we need to, where we, maybe where we need to start is to just cut down the four aspects of sex, so that you know when you play in your sexual space and in sexual energy, where are you playing? And then from there, in your play, you'll determine how much you capture from people around you as you continue to play with them. Okay, before we do that, our guest is officially in the house, Madam yes. Speaker. Yes. Welcome to the party. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start. Once again, you're part of the panel. You're going to be part of the panel for the next hour. We just want to know, for the ladies who are sitting here and who don't know who Madam Speaker is, and who to watch, can you just reintroduce yourself and exactly how we know you? Hi, ladies. How are you doing? I'm good. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker. Hey! I'm famous for having a very big mouth and very opinionated, actually. And, yeah, I'm famous for something which is very unfortunate, which is uh, divorce, because when I went through that path, I decided to make it a public thing because the pressure of staying in a very unhealthy mar marriage was a private thing. So when I, when I left, I wanted to make it public because I wanted to really liberate myself from the inside out. So that trended a lot because the things that I was speaking about was so relatable for a lot of ladies who don't want to speak about it. So yeah, and I've been riding on that since. Yay. Yeah. That's dope. I thrive on thrice. And that's also another part of the conversation. Um, maybe let me start by a, a, a hands situation. How many of us have been in relationships? How many of us have been dependent on a man in the relationship? Intentionally or unintentionally? Right? This is emotionally, financially, sexually. physically, sexually, otherwise. <laughs> right? How many of us have broken up or had to break up with that person and rebuild our lives? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. Yeah. Rebuilding your life after a relationship that you had been dependent on. And who better also? to have this conversation the with, right? Out. Right? Um, like I said, the conversations are not limited to what we talk about. So if you have an idea, if you have, not necessarily an idea, but a comment that you'd like to, to say, if somebody here had sparked a feeling in you, please take that mic. We really do encourage you to have these conversations. I did say to you, this is an open and safe space. Let's have those conversations, cool? Yeah. Yeah, Let's get started. Sexual body count, as she says, as she called it. But the sexual spirits that we inherit, ladies, those we never speak about. And simply because we get into relationships with the assumption that, and I'm going to be, you know, um, monogamous to this person, because this monogamy thing we throw around, right? Yeah. And we don't realize that in sleeping with someone, we also get it, we take a lot in. Women take a lot in. Can we please open up that conversation? Maybe be when we open up the conversation, hi everybody, I didn't greet. Hello ladies, you look amazing. Um, maybe from my side, you know, when we decided to have this conversation, I immediately thought, I actually don't know much about it. And maybe I have a different understanding of being tied to somebody. And I never thought about being tied in a soulful and sexual uh, way with them. So I'm here to learn, I'm here to understand better what it means to have a soul tie, a sexual tie, and these energies that we exchange during intercourse. So my understanding of um, souls is that souls don't marry. That's what I know, right? Mm. That souls don't marry, they operate um, individually, either good or evil, those are the spirits. Um, but two people who then decide to become one, those become one flesh. Now you know I will mention God. Let's, let's, let's look at Tebby, I'm gonna mention God. So for me... me to church. <laughs> it is the Sabbath for me today, by the way, and I'm here. So forgive me if I start preaching. Cool. But um, so for me, my understanding is that two become one, become one flesh. 
Um, I don't see where it talks about um, the spiritual aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to learn about that. KG? I'm also here to learn. Um, I think my information about the topic is just above, I don't know, it's just above level. You know, it's not in debt and maybe she would have and maybe you would have. But I'm here to learn. Uh, my question would be to your point that maybe souls don't marry only flesh marries, then what happens when they say we must live in the spirit? What, what's the sexual spirit that's happening between me and that person at the time? What actually happens between us when we engage in that sexual activity? More also when it's not just a one-time thing. Yeah. I'm living with this person and I'm having sex with them every yeah. chance I get. Yeah. What then ha actually happens to our you know, spirits or souls at the no, time. That, those were the questions I was asking myself because my understanding is when two people become one, there is an exchange of just more than the physical aspect of it. it the, it's got to be, you know, even if I don't know about it, even if it's not been preached at my church yet, but it doesn't mean that it does not exist just because I don't know about it. But I'm curious to know as well, Uguti, when we exchange, because their energy is exchanged yeah. and it's got to influence me in one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I think this is going to be very insightful, but please allow me to break it down first before I go to the yeah, answer. Yeah. A human being is made out of four entities or four beings. A female being is made out of five. What is the fifth one? We start with number one. We are made, when we sit here, we are sitting as our physical beings. Majority of us, when we sit and we see each other, what we are seeing is the body and that's the physical being, number one. Number two, the physical being is electrified through the intellect or what is referred to as the nerves, which is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And these, unfortunately, also we refer to them when we talk about the nervous system and how it functions, we also refer to as the intellect or the mind of the body. Number two, when these two interact together, they usually go into a reaction. Like for instance, if you step on a pin, or if I go and touch your nipples, if your body nipples react, what will happen is the fact that the, 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 the nerves will go to the body and say, oh, something is touching nicely. And then it goes into the third part, which are your hormones, which is the hormonal part or the emotional part. Because then that is what is going to determine how you react. Number four, being the spiritual being that you are, in African culture, how do we explain this? If you die today, when we go to the mortuary, we never say we are fetching Baba. No? We are saying we are fetching my body. Clearly, there is an entity that is me that drives me. Okay. And so, when you go into a sexual dance, which of the four are you using? There are people that dance only physically and you finish it there. There are people that would then go into a physical and an emotional dance. There are people that will go into the intellectual dance, which is why we will say to you the mind or the brain is the most important part in sex, which what leads us to what we talked about the other day. Are you able to think yourself into an orgasm? Are you able to orgasm yourself into prayer? Now, when we talk of prayer, because there's an... In there's a spiritual being, it doesn't matter what you want to call it, yeah. that drives you. So which of these levels are you having your sex? So if you are not having it, because this is the higher being, which is the spiritual one. So if you have never had it, either intentionally or unintentionally, you will not know what it does. Yeah. But for people that are really practitioners in this case, this is some of sex that we talk about as Kama Sutra and also as Tantra sex. So those Tant are the sexual Tantra spaces. sex. Yes. Now, Tantra sex Tantra. is more of a spiritual sex. When you go into the dance, you don't even need to move your body. You kindly insert and you stay in the space and you use energy. Because remember, we are a ball of energy. So how do you then utilize this ball of energy? So if you have had a soulmate, which is somebody that you are able to dance with in a spiritual space together away, then that's where we can talk about how then the spirituality becomes part of your spirit of, of your sexual dance. But as I close in this one, I'm sure there's going to be. Oh no, wait! Questions. You're not closing on this one. What, what do you mean? <laughs> what, where, where are we dancing? Where are we? Dancing? Where are you dancing in the four spaces? Maybe let me just touch on number five, okay. which is a gift to women and to women only. It is a pleasure energy. You have a spot of pleasure. 
And in the, all these four things, yes, there might be pleasure, there might be this. We have been given that. So you've got a pleasure button. How much are you using the pleasure button? There's a reason why the clitoris is sitting on top and it is not hidden and it does not need anything else to be touching it. And the fact that we've got hands and you can able to touch it, that's your pleasure button. How far are you in that space? Because you need to make sure that in all these other four areas, you are able to pleasurize yourself and benefit of all the sexual benefits. So this gives you an opportunity without feeling like you are going to be judged to be a pansexual, to be able to practice on your own hey. as part of other sexual dances. He's gonna tell me twice about practicing on my own. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about this? Do you believe in spiritual energies at all or sexual partners that we sort of take on as women? Not really. As a, I'd like to call myself a church dropout. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a church me. dropout because there are so many things that I have to unlearn which I was conditioned to believing, which I'm now starting to believe what I am. Here, man, something is not right. So me unlearning all of that, to some people I come across as, no, mm -mm, this one, give me hit in these days. You understand? And I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that because if it, makes, if, if it means that I should be able to connect with my God the way that I understand, but not the way that I'm being preached to, to say, this is how you should connect, then I'm comfortable with being a church dropout. Wow. Yeah. Can, I, can I just add on this? That she's raising something very important. There's two very important factors that we should not forget about life. Anything that is demonized and anything that has been um, oppressed has got power. Anything that oppresses you. For instance, in my, in my life, since I've lived, I have never seen anything that is oppressed like a black woman. For me, it shows the power that the thing has. If you look at anything that is being demonized, look at it. There is power that is hidden in it. Somebody does not want you to know that power. Because it could be a, a dangerous weapon. You could, you could be having a lethal weapon that you can use. So Certainly. nobody wants you to, to, to have that. To yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, when you were married, right, did you ever think of anything of that sort, that, you know, there are these energies that exist? Or I suppose you didn't necessarily believe in the energies. But did you ever think that sex was actually more than just sex with your partner? Because I think for the longest time, especially when it comes to women, uh, when we're in relationships, we're having sex for just pleasure. And we don't take in consideration all these other energies. I mean, people believe in cleansing before they get married, you know, to cleanse all the sexual energies that they've inherited from their past relationships. And we enter into these relationships with these spirits. But it's only ever women who go through these cleansings and, oh my God, I've taken energies. And then we never speak about the males who take on sexual energies. Yeah. So did you ever feel like that was a thing for you okay just to deviate a bit i'm gonna come back to that um there's a thing that when as a woman you get married to a man and you're a virgin it's a beautiful thing right because like your your virginity should be a gift to your husband right but you're giving that gift to somebody who apparently if we're saying that we, if we're going to be speaking sorry <laughs> i'm going to say apparently a lot because of the things that i have to unlearn okay yeah so um, if, if your virginity is a gift to a man who apparently has been sleeping around with so many people that he's got souls tied to that person, and when I get it, you are clean, and then you're coming in and you're being connected with this person, that means that all these spirits, if we're for the sake of this argument, let's just say these things do exist, right? Yeah. Uh, that means that when, not clean as you are, holy as you are, you're coming in and you're inheriting all these spirits from this person who's been around. So now it goes back to that thing, because remember, these things are usually attached to women, as women say. Or, um, these soul ties, we are the ones, who, we, we are so invested in that more than men. We don't, men, Listen, they just do their thing and they're done. But then because we don't want souls to be tied to us, but you're sleeping with somebody who's had a hundred souls tied to them, we don't want to think about that. Another thing is, going back to what you were asking, anything that we don't understand or anything that requires that we apply our minds, we ditch it. Hey. Yeah. Okay, tell me more. Because that's the devil trying to tell you to like lose focus. Yeah. You know, okay. when I, the only thing that you should be focusing on is just, you know, maintaining this blessing that God gave you, which is a man. So meaning that whatever it is that this, remember you are, you are, you are a helper. I guess that's what the Bible says. We are a helper, right? So meaning that as a helper, when I, we're not about you. We're not here for you. When are you here to serve? Meaning that whatever it is that gives pleasure to this person that you're helping, you go with it. You go with the flow. Anything that wants to question that is the devil trying to ruin a good thing. 
Yeah. But, but, but you know, uh, going back to the same thing of spiritual cleansing, remember we are spiritual beings, which, 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 which is why when the absence of you within you, there's no life. So that spiritual being, mainly most of the time, needs cleansing from you as an individual. Uh, we don't need external things, really need external things to cleanse the spiritual being because by you having reconnected and knowing how it functions will determine how far you can purify yourself and unpurify yourself. Because it is in the mind of what we think to say, if I have danced with this person spiritually, do I have to move away from them? Because if it's a dance that we want to go into, remember there's different types of love that we can love people. Majority of us, we love by, by hands and see. I want to see and touch you. But I could be that person who wants to love you with my heart and my spirit. Whether I've seen and I've touched you, we are able to meet and go into a dance. But if you have met a person like that and you feel that it is no longer good for your own health and it is no longer good for your own spiritual growth, you can then go into a space where you say, I have learned from this person. This person was in my life for a certain time. And this time has come for this person to, to, to move away. Because we need to respect time. If I have met time with you and I have learned all the lessons I need to learn from you, I don't need you in my life. How do we then separate our spiritual interaction if one feels I need to move away? There's a lady here. Can she please allow me uh, to ask if can she go into this conversation? Because the understanding that we have for me as an auntie and for as, uh, her as, as a Christian and from her as a yes, bro, and then they Maybe she could give us a we? perspective. <laughs> Maybe she could give us a perspective because we are here to learn from each other. Mm. Can you give us a perspective? The mic is coming to you. Please, babe. Sorry. <laughs> I was more nervous about that you were looking at me. I didn't hear the whole question. <laughs> so she's asking you to repeat. We're talking about spiritual cleansing after you have been into spiritual dancing through sex with certain yeah. people and you feel like somebody has left or you have given them your energy. Either you want to remove the energy from the person or you want to remove yourself from the other person. Or because you could decide, I, I like these energies, I want to keep them. I want them yeah. to elevate me more than the lessons that I've learned. Okay. Um so it's very funny that you bring that up because um, I've come across quite a few clients that have um, problems with this topic about spiritual ties and things that are happening in their lives and they have no idea that it's due to how many sex partners they've had or the kinds of sex partners that they had. So I just believe that I always, put, I always put it in a way, it's probably disgusting, but like for someone young to understand what I'm trying to say to them about spiritual ties through sex and things like that, I always ask, would you just meet a stranger and let them spit in your mouth? And then she goes, okay. ew, no. So I'm like, then why would you let them enter you and exchange fluids with your whole body, exchange a certain level of your being? Because now when you were talking about the five... Um, entities that a person is my question was to myself i wonder can you be all of them can you can you involve all of them in in, in sexual encounters like can you be the mind and the body and the spirit and this and that and that because i feel like some of us don't even know that we carry such dense um existences for example i had a life before i came, became a sangoma i was a girl girl, yeah, girl. <laughs> you know you know what i mean so it, it, it was something that I had to learn that you can't, like, like you said before, as many people that the, your sexual partner has slept with, you are actually sleeping with all of them. So when you want to go deep into the things that scare people, you're basically sleeping with all the curses that his, gen, like the generational yeah. curses that his family has. You're basically sleeping with all the financial problems his family has. If and he doesn't even know what it gibo. You understand? So now you are going through your financial life, your school life, nothing is going right. Candy, it's what? You can't keep your panties tight. Ah though. 
and now I, that's, I, I, very that that's very controversial. Like that's That's very controversial. That's not a fair thing to say. And, AJ, and there's sorry. a mic that's gonna that's gonna go that side as yeah. well. And, and I say that, which is great, by the way. We do encourage disagreements here, right? It's opinions. Everyone has an opinion, and you don't have to agree with that someone's opinion. Um, I think the mic is going to go that side. Let me share a story while the mic is moving, right? Um, I remember, like I said, unfortunately, I don't necessarily have a cleansing background or a going to to someone to go cleanse um, or a praying situation. Do you know what I mean? For me, it was more a, for a lack of a better word, throwing it out to the universe and hoping that the universe sort of, you know, comes through for me. Um, I remember being in a relationship with a very toxic individual and it was maybe for even for three months, it, it was nothing long. But I remember hearing in that time how many sexual partners this person has had, right? And one of them, I've heard that, you know, she had gone through many uh, terminations, which I don't know whether it should mean anything to me. But when we did break up, I remember going celibate for seven months purposefully so. And my celibacy was also based on everything. My celibacy was I didn't want to speak to men. I didn't want to see men. Firstly, obviously, what I did was go for an entire check right, because trash, hello. So I went for an entire STI test, STD test, HIV test, everything to make sure that I am good. You know, checked, had a pap smear, made sure that I was good. I went on the seven day hiatus, uh, seven months hiatus. Look, after I came out sharp, I was trying to fuck anything that walks. But <laughs> point is, that was then a choice for me because then I was making a choice of who I wanted to have sexual pleasures with or how I wanted to pleasure myself. As opposed to this man I had claimed to be mono monogamous with who was not monogamous to me at all, who in fact, in the time while we were together, I found out that, well, uh, after, found out that he had a wife. I didn't know this, by the way. I would say, if and I did, I would say. Out. I found out that he had a wife. Mm. I found out that he had slept with two people that I know, and there were three others that the other girl had known about. So in this time, and I found out that there was a rape situation also going on. So these were things that I didn't know about. So can you imagine how disgusted I felt in myself? And a part of me doesn't want to feel like that anymore. I don't ever want to feel to a point where I'm disgusted in myself, because it felt right for me. This was my boyfriend. This was someone who had asked me out and came to me saying they've got clear intentions. Fine, I might have missed the red flags that were there, and that's on me, and I take that onus. But the onus of how many sexual partners this particular person had had and how I felt they were coming into me, just like what you were saying, you know, those energies, there's energies you want to take out and there's energies you want to take in. This one, um, someone had said to me that it takes seven months for a human to regain new cells. And for me, whether it's true or not, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm not a medical doctor. So that's why I said, in seven months, this man would, this would be a body that man had never touched. And that for me was the sentiment behind it. Well, thank you very much. That's very profound. And, 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 and that's why I'd said earlier, and, and, and thank you for coming in and giving us a different perspective. Because what matters is that we all, all roads lead to Johannesburg and everything else is correct. Because it's not my journey, does not, it does not make it wrong or right, but it, it, it's very important that we respect each other. Yes, I come from the same world of self-cleansing because I believe as an individual, there's a space where only me and my higher being and where God can reach and nobody else can. And it is in that space where I would need to do cleansing. And it is only the self. Where I go back and I say, I have been through this journey. What are the reasons of me having gone through that journey? Because everything has got a reason. Did I learn my lessons? Whether they were good or bad, they are important for the character. And because they need to develop my character for me to be the person that I am. So I always say... God was there and he's allowed it because I needed it. So that becomes very important. But what is central is that for me, I might decide for whatever reason to say I have kept your energy for a specific reason. Now I don't want it because it can never go to that space between me and my higher power. Okay, can I ask something? Um, to your point of, of self-cleansing and everything like that, there are women who have been told that they have spiritual husbands. This has nothing to do with who they slept with. They don't even know that they are sleeping with these entities at night. So with your experience, how, how does one 
self-cleanse from that? Because the reason I'm asking this, there's a trend that's currently going on on TikTok. This girl is asking, what is the one thing that has happened to you and people don't believe you? So she came out and she says she was, leaving with, she was living with her uncle and then the uh, uncle left um, where they were staying and uh, they rented out the room to someone else. So the person that they had rented out the room to told her that, no man, when uh, do you see these people that you're sleeping with? She didn't, she wasn't even aware and she was a teenager. And she was like, no, I don't know. I'm still a virgin and I'm not sleeping with anyone. So this person starts describing that I see this man, he's tall, he's dark, he's handsome, he's got red eyes, he's a ghost or he's whatever it, he is. And he, he really thinks he is your husband. So this child is never engaged in any sexual activity in a physical form, let alone, let alone consciously so. But she does have this spiritual being that is having sexual intercourse with her in a spiritual realm. So how does one cleanse herself from that or how do you get rid of those kind of entities that are just roaming around <laughs> can we have a roaming mic to this table that's it yeah so so before I became a Sangoma I was I, I, I don't want to say I was I am very Christian people don't understand how but I do Okay, so I don't believe that there's one particular way to wash a person. Do you understand? So we all have different beliefs. There's one God. That's what I believe. There's one God. And he decides about your life. You are the only person that can have a conversation about your life with him. Do you understand? So whether you go to a church that they believe that you have spiritual husbands with people you've slept with or spiritual husbands that you don't know about and they tell you that you need to have a prayer session or you go to a sangoma, they do a whole ritual whatever you feel will work for your spirit will work for your spirit according to the conversations you have with I God. I love that. I love that. Uh, sorry, I'm going to clap for that. Yes. <laughs> because that's a very profound thing to say because there are many other people who don't necessarily Rataba, you know Rataba to go the Sangoma route because maybe my family doesn't believe in that that's not how I was raised so I don't know and the, the church route you know not many people believe it they don't even know where to start or how to start so the self-cleansing part that's my question you know whether or not we are able to self-cleanse as human beings this is male and females you know how they always say um, salt and water, things like that. But what if I don't necessarily want anything like that, but I can take the mic. Don't, don't, don't bring, don't give them back the mic. Keep that mic. <laughs> saying even your route that you took for the seven months, I respect yeah, that. Like, yes. I feel like, it, like I, I believe it. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. For example, for me, when I'm in a relationship, I take a long time to get into another one. I need a year. I need two. I need yeah. to forget how you smell. You understand? Mm. For me, that's my cleansing. Mm. For me, I don't want to bring that spirit into my next relationship. Yes. So that, for me, that's enough of a cleansing. Do you understand? Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. On, um, on what works for you, you believe in what works for you, ne? I'm just going to give an example with something that happened to me uh, when I lost my first child. Um, they said that I needed to pee in her grave because if I don't pee in her grave, I'm not going to have more kids. Yeah, yeah, they said that. So, because it didn't make sense to me, and obviously they're going to give me reasons, right, to say, listen, uh, this is how it's being done. And these are all people who are telling me this, right? So to me, it didn't make sense. And I knew that because it doesn't make sense to me, it's not going to work for me. Yeah. I refuse to pee in that grave, and I have two kids now. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, God. really, I believe that if, you, if you don't believe it, it won't, it won't affect yes. you. Uh, yeah. Tell me something, ladies. Have you ever felt like you have inherited someone's spirit? Somewhere or another, you know, because we, we either know, right? We either know or we don't. There are things where you feel, I mean, they're not going right. And this could particularly mean, it's, I mean, like you said, these are things like uktwala, if batwele gubo. There's many things that sort of would make you feel like, I think I've inherited a sexual spirit here. Or I think I've he inherited a spirit from this person. Have you ever felt that way? And, and how does it feel? Uh, there's an audience, there's an audience there. Okay, no, I think it happened to me. Uh, I was in third year varsity, then I dated this guy, and then 
like after dating this guy, like it ended very dramatically, but at the time I didn't know. But I'm in the clothing industry, so I did a clothing course. And after I dated that guy, I hated clothes. I hated making clothes for a very long time. Even, that was 2014. Even today, I still don't make clothes. And I, like, when I think back, I'm like, it's because of that guy. Because at the time, I was looking for a job after varsity, whatever, whatever. And he was like, discouraging me all the time. No, don't look for a job, whatever, whatever. And then I went against his whatevers. And then I went to another province to look for a job, and I left him where I was. And then he hated me for that. And then I was like, okay, my, like, my life is picking up, whatever. But after that, I couldn't make clothes anymore. And I used to love making clothes since I was a little girl. I used to love making clothes. What does that mean? But, but you know, maybe as, as you un un untangle this question and, and unpack it, what would be very interesting uh, with anyone that felt like they have inherited a spirit from somebody, because what we are deciphering now is on the negative side. Has anybody felt like I am with a spirit, but that gives me positive vibes? With somebody that is no okay, longer there. Success is sexually transmitted. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick one before we answer that. Um, do you have an, uh, We've got an audience as well. Um, hi, ladies. My name is Ayanda Mabote. Um, I feel like sex is quite taboo in black culture, and the conversation of sexual ties further perpetuates that taboo of sex in black culture. Uh, I hear a lot of conversations about people speaking about, oh, you inherit Amabato Mundo, the generational curses. Is it the same for Intantayo Mundo as well? Because yeah. you never hear that conversation. Yeah, that's what that, that's exactly saying. what she was asking. Yeah. Do you think that happens? Have you, have, ladies, have you ever had that? No, I'm still yeah. broke, so I don't know I if mean, that works. Should. If, if evil exists, then good, the good should exist as well. Yeah. There's no reason it shouldn't. I think it does. Um, uh, it's not a sexual thing, unfortunately. Like, I feel like I've inherited everything that my mom used to do. Yeah. So my mom used to cook. She used to make clothes. And she used to be a smart businesswoman, although she was not very loud like me. <laughs> but all these things, I feel like I inherited. And every time I have conversations with my dad, he would always say, you know what, you, you take so much after your mom. Oh. So I feel like that is something positive to inherit. Other than that, relationship-wise, woo, <laughs> Jehovah. So here's the funny thing for me when it comes to... Um, inheriting spirits, right? I don't know if I have or haven't, right? Mm. But I remember the day I heard of it, it freaked me out and I left that relationship. Like my friends didn't understand why I left this guy. But now that I think about it, I think I had lost a sense of who Unolu was, you know? I, I saw myself buying this guy phones with rent money. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that. <laughs> no, we're done talking about it. Well, I mean, there are many who've, who've had the same <laughs> instance or, or worse. Oh, yes, and I saw in the comments yeah. on the last episode. So, but what I'm saying is, how I left my then boyfriend, somebody said to me, Sissy, who is this guy that you are with? And I said, no, but his name is... No, I, I did, uh -uh. Who is he? We are Mazi. Now. We are Mazi. And then I couldn't say anything, you know? Ati, you go around with this guy saying, oh, this is my boyfriend, yet you don't know anything about him. You will find yourself stepping on something that was not even meant for you. Yeah. Yeah. But because you were there, now you go and you sleep. How do you sleep at night in someone else's house that you don't even know? <laughs> Yo, we're guilty of that. And you sleep, you dream. It's absolutely absurd. But, I, but from that conversation, I left my guy. And he didn't understand why I left him. But I said, actually, between the two of us, I don't see a future. I, like, and I really sat down and I thought about it. I said, I don't see you. Like, I, 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 this is not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So I left. Yeah. Um, I have like a mini story. Um, 
always. It's not <laughs> <laughs> I can only do it. And it didn't happen long ago. So I was just walking. You know, there's people that are gifted that can just see things as you're walking and maybe they feel the urgency to tell you what they see. So as I was walking down the road, I meet this lovely woman. She's a gifted woman. She's beaded. She has a traditional attire. And she goes, Sisi, do you know that you're walking with people? I'm like, what people? Who are they? And then she gave me names. Sorry. And then she gave me names. She's like, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? I'm like, I don't know these people. Then I go back home and I ask my grandmother, who's this? The first question this lady asked was like, who's Ben? I'm like, I don't know a Ben. So I asked my grandmother, who's Ben? And she goes, where did you hear that name? It's like, I bumped into a woman and she asked me who, who that man is. And she says, Ben is your great grandfather. It's like, how? It's like, he fathered uh, one of your family members and apparently he's like walking with you. So I was like, okay, if he fathered that family member, then it means there was a sexual tie. And by virtue of that sexual tie, I've inherited him as a spirit. He's not having any sex with me or anything like that, but apparently he's walking with me and all the car accidents that I could have been involved in, he's part of that. Would say, no, 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 this kid can't be involved in that kind of accident, so he's been protecting me. For the first time in my life, I was like, I used to undermine, and I'm sorry, I used to undermine, I was like, hey, won't come into your twasa nowadays, hey, there's no such a thing. <laughs> but experiencing yeah. that, I was like, yo, that's real. Yeah. It exists. Yeah, do you want to say something? No, no, I'm saying interesting. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Very interesting, but at the same time, I think what becomes more important for me in this conversation is the fact that we come all from so many different worlds, and for we are learning to respect the worlds that we come from, yeah. to say there is my world and it is for me, but what is central is that you need to know your own journey and what are the things, because... I personally believe that you will only be affected by the things that you believe in. If you don't believe in, it's most probably not going to be part of any, any damage or any positive thing for that matter in your life. But going back to what she was saying, you know women, we have been made to, I always make uh, say, from the vagina to the womb, we have been made to be incubators and creators of human beings, to the top where we are made to have pleasure. And then we have breasts which involves us being naturals. The only thing that we need to do is to balance the nurturing together with how we function intellectually to say, I will nurture, but it needs to end here. And it has become a fall for majority of us because now we nurture even beyond where we are supposed to now realize now it's money for rent, but you need to then go and, and buy a cell phone. Because also... We have gotten into a point where uh, because you would go on a date and the men will pay, also we feel we need to return the favor and we need to buy things. And yet in, if we go into a clear understanding of a relationship, you add more without having to put money, especially if you know the value that you add in a relationship. Uh, we're adding a little bit too much, ladies, and, and let's be honest about that. And, and this is now even going to lead me to the next conversation that we're going to have, is the adding too much where we become almost dependent on this person. And like I said, this is whether, it, whether this is emotionally, intellectually, because a lot of our intellect has built those men. Those men that are going around with the, with the other women, we've built those men intellectually, mm. financially, otherwise. Mm. We give so much and we don't know when to withdraw. Mm. That when this man leaves or when this man lives his life independently, we don't know where to start. We don't know where to go. Especially, and I've never been married before. Let's speak to the ones who have been married and the ones who have been in long-term relationships. I can imagine that there's a sense of, sure, let's talk partnership. That's cute. But we don't talk about the dependency that we all have on each other, your husband and yourself, right? But I always feel like the woman's dependency is always so crippling. And I don't want to judge it. I don't want to say, it as, um, ish, girls, you do too much. But I also feel none of us are calling each other out to say, maybe you are also partly an enabler of yes. where you are right now. Yes. We don't take acknowledgement of the part that we play. The red flags that we miss, nah, not even, the red buildings that we miss <laughs> that were in our faces. And we come out and we say, this man did this, this man did yeah. this, this man. But we don't come out and say, 
I did this, I did this, and that allowed this man to say this. And I said to someone the other day, and I said, and uh, the unpeople, an asshole will always be an asshole. You enabled an asshole to be asshole. Yes. Yeah. You know? So he'll even do more because there was nothing that was going to stop this nigga to be the person that he was. You just assisted him with your money, hey. with your brains, with your physique, etc. You enabled this person and you didn't see it. When are we going to take acknowledgement for the part that we play? And this is the conversation that I'm coming at of rebuilding yourself, right? We've yeah. had these sexual ties with this person. Let's say this person was trash. Let's say this person was not trash. But there's a rebuilding that needs to come into it. And we need to first look at ourselves. I says Nugin Amakwap. Let's start there. There's um, a, a video that I did in the past where I was saying ladies attacked me, but anyway, I'm always, I'm always ready for that. I said that you should be able to pinpoint your contribution towards the failure of your relationship. Yeah. Because if you can't do that, then you're not ready to move on to the next one. Yep. And until you acknowledge that which you have learned from your previous fa failed relationship, you, you're still going to keep attracting the same type of trash. Yep. Until you learn something then you know that next time when that type of trash approaches you, that is trash. With me personally, um, I think maybe because I was so young, I've always, I've always seen myself as somebody who is very disciplined financially and otherwise. And I've always been a person who sets goals and smash goals. So I met this man who is very, very kind. You know, and we always find the one thing which is like something to hold on to and then we ride on it. Even when somebody's doing a whole lot of other bad stuff to you, you overlook all of that because there's this one nice thing though about him that I like. And you know, if I lose this person, then I'm losing all of that, right? So with me, I enabled a whole lot of financial abuse so much that in my understanding, I was helping you see the light to say, listen, there's actually light at the end of ITC, right? But um, what, what that was translated to, or, or the way that the person translated it was that I, I can do, she can do it. You know, she's, well, she's more capable of actually running this household and doing all these things. Even though you communicated with your mouth to say, listen, I'm only going to do this for five years. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you rebuild your financial life for five years. Once we're done with that, we move together. We're going to synchronize, right? Yeah. But now, because this person is already used to you being the person that you are, they, don't, they can't see you as anything else. If, if you are a Coke bottle, you'll always be this bottle to that person, regardless of where you are or the circumstances, right? So with me... Um, when I was tired of caring somebody, you know, financially, and I was like, okay, listen, because initially I wanted to carry you to a certain point, and I believe that now that we're here and everything is clear, I don't want to carry you anymore. I want to walk side by side with you. Then to him, that was translated as, no, I have changed. She has changed now. All of a sudden, she, she, she thinks she's better. She, she, she's hiding things from me now. She doesn't want to share with me anymore. But that wasn't the case. Because... It was not something which was agreed upon. Like, even though we are agreeing on it, like speaking, but subconsciously you knew that, okay, what I want, Mina, is somebody who's going to be like this, somebody who's going to carry me for the rest of my life. But then because I was, the intention was not for me to carry you for the rest of my life, when I now say, okay, this is the last kick of a dying horse, you're like, mm, something is not right. So, Vele, you know, you're not wrong. Um, we do enable a lot of these things. And, but then remember at the end of the day, the intentions are good. You're not enabling it because, Jay, we're not because you are capable of enabling. You're doing all of that because you are hoping that it's going to yield good results. Remember everything that you do, at the very moment when you're doing it, you're, like, you, you're not seeing it as something that's going to backfire. Yeah. The, the, the decision that you make today, you, you are under the impression that it's going to yield the best results. But then th that doesn't guarantee that it's going to do that, but it does. You know, there's two things looking at research that uh, lead to a lot of separations and divorces, which, by the way, sometimes are a solution. I don't really look at them as a devil because it gets to a point where you realize I've learned so much from this person. It's time. We need to understand the concept of meeting time yeah. and having grown to a certain level and you no longer run at the same frequency. It's like you are running a, a train, a, 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 a Isporosa train, and one is here and one is here. That train is going to derail. So you need to be able to identify that time. But anyway, there's two things that have been the primary causes of divorce. It is love and sex. There's a song, But then if that is finished, because it does, it creates a problem. The biggest contributor is finances. You know, we're sitting in that table. There is one thing that, especially as black women, we struggle with. 
what, what is wrong with saying, I am Babalwa, uh, what do you do? Because I need to know who you are and what you do. That's part of networking. It's something that we are scared of. We are scared of asking the men, which is why you go and sleep in that house. You don't even know what this person does. It's a conversation that we need to open. Because you need to know, you need to determine how you want to date, also depending on your status at the time. Do you want to date up or do you want to date down? And what are the reasons? I'm still uh, di digesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, a lot of times, that's what I'm saying, when it comes to relationships, we're, we're so conditioned, right? And women enter into these relationships, like you said, we're entering for the long term of it, the longevity of it. None of us ever think it's going to fail. But also, we really need to admit that we preach two different things, guys. Because we always say, maintain your independence, make sure that you're fine. Let's even relate it to the Monewa story. Right, that, that we all can, you know, we've all been, we've all known, we've all seen on social media. And I think it's always been that thing of, you need to make sure that you've got this in place, you've got this, you've got your own finances, you've got your own savings in place. But when there's a man who comes to you and says, nah, I want to marry you. And I always feel like with women, once a man throws this, I'm going to marry you word. Relebala everything. Right, but also in her defense, it was a, I will leave Gallo music. I will leave this, I will leave this because we are starting a family and you're my husband. Even though you haven't asked me, right? But this is what you said. And your word is key and gold for me. So where do we sort of differentiate? And I don't, it's always a hindsight thing. I think for her, it was a hindsight thing. She sat and she said, this is what she did. This is what he did. Oh my God. And I even let him pay for my, for my storage. Oh, I paid for this car. Oh, it was a hindsight thing for her. But when she was in this, when she was in this relationship, it was a completely different thing. She was in it for the long term. How do we differentiate, guys? We've all been idiots. Take a mic if you've been an idiot. We've all been an idiot to a man. We've all been, not even, I don't even want to use the word idiot. Let me take that back. We've all been so hopelessly and helplessly in love with the man and helplessly in love with his potential that we got to a point where we said, uh, this is my part. I get about a 50-50, you must play your role. This is my part that I'm playing in the relationship. But you come out of it so broken. She is so broken. I, personally, I, I feel like when it comes to manipulation, um, it doesn't, for a lot of us that have fallen a victim to such, we forget that uh, you are human. You can't separate it from, there are family members who do that to their own children. And then there are men who do that to their women, same as women who do it to men. When you're being manipulated, it doesn't matter if it's coming from a boyfriend or from your mother. Manipulation is manipulation. That is why at some time you can't even see it. You can't differentiate it. So in, in Munewa's case, even if Beyenzo or Baba Akelento Leo, she would have fallen victim to it anyways because if, if your partner or your father says, you're not going to think because it's it's, it's somebody that you trust. It's somebody that you love. It's somebody that you've convinced yourself, even with those red buildings. Would you know, man? Uh, they won't do that to me, you know? So I feel like it's, it's, it's a very, it's blurry, especially for me. Me, I won't lie. My mother can do the same thing uh, to me as much as my boyfriend or my husband would do it to me because of this love, there's this veil that doesn't allow me to see the situation for what it is. Like, okay. You know, there's something very interesting about love that I'm just going to throw as we go into this conversation. You know, when you love someone, that feeling, you are the only one who feels the warmth and benefits from it. The next person does not really know what is happening. They have to build castles in the air. Because you don't know, when I say I love you, and I love you the way I understand love, I don't love you in your own way. So it becomes very important that we need to learn to separate love and have the difficult conversations. Our problem is we are scared of the difficult conversations. We are very strong and we are mental, but we are scared of asking, you said this is what is going to happen, why is it not happening? Can we sit down, let's understand. You say you are working, can I at least have an idea of where do you work? We, that's the one of the shortfalls that we are having as women, that we want to nurture something that you don't know. Because, yes, it is a caterpillar, it might turn into a butterfly. What if the butterfly is a color that you don't like? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. And is my 
is my mic on? My mic is on. I had said to someone before, and I think the big part of relationships that break down is communication. This is even in friendships and all relationships. We don't know how to communicate as adults. As we're sitting here today, rapallo, right? And I said we don't do this in relationships, and I think it's important. And maybe that's where the breakdown of relationships comes in, is the communicating in the relationship. We are going on, and the thing about life is we're in survival mode, guys. Everyone is in survival mode. Your husband is in a survival mode. Your boyfriend is in survival mode. You in survival mode. You wake up in the morning and you go to fight life, to fight Cyril's economy, to, 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 you know? And you get to a point where none of you check back on each other to say, are we still moving on the right track? Yeah. And every time when we have these conversations on what is the intention of this relationship, what are we intending this relationship to be, it's always, ah, man, let's, 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 you know, let's go with the flow. Yeah. Ugh, if you do this, that, we're going a little bit too much in it. Before you carry on with the intention of the relationship, can yeah. I add, maybe we should also ask the question of what is your understanding of love yes. and what it means to be in a relationship? Yes. Because I think that is where the cracks are. Because my understanding and your understanding are two different. 100%. There are expectations yes. that need to be spoken about. Mm -hmm. What you expect from your woman, what you yep. expect from your man as well. So that when these things then are not delivered, you are then saying, uh uh, guy, we've, we've lost it somewhere. And Can you, we backtrack? You were lucky enough to have pre counseling, premarital yeah. counseling, and that's important, right? And none of us go into premarital counseling or even relationships, you know? Maybe we not, we, our intention is not to get married, and a lot of people have that. Marriage is not the optimum thing, but companionship is important. Yeah. And in companionship, guys, two years, six months, a year from now, we need to say, babe, are we still moving in the same direction that we would have hoped for? If there's a turn, if there's a sharp curve in there, let's speak about it. Let's say, okay, maybe the plans might have changed because maybe finances, because maybe we've moved places, because et cetera. These are conversations we need to check back on, we never do. And this is why 10 years from now, there'll be a woman who says, I don't have a degree. He went and got his degrees. Yeah. I feel like I'm complacent. I feel like I didn't do anything. And this man is now successful in his career. And I've just been sitting here. And that's not what you discussed when you, when you started, right? When you started the relationship, it was all about us. And we're building. We're going to be successful. It was never you're going to sit down. Somewhere along the line, someone sat down. And someone forgot to touch base and said, Babe, I'm sitting down and I don't understand why. Can we touch base on that and see how we can go? And your husband will say, maybe let's fund a business. Maybe let's do this. Maybe none of us do that. And that's why women come out of relationships resenting their people, yes. uh, their persons. That's why men come out of relationships resenting their wives or their girlfriends. Because we don't touch base to say, are we still moving according to where we, were, we had planned? Because we don't get into relationship. Okay, some do. Not everybody gets into relationships for vibes. Yeah. Yeah. But I hate to believe that you guys would spend six, seven, eight years of your relationship for vibes. Come on. It doesn't make sense. Here's another point I'd like to make. Even going before the premarital counseling, if you guys watch um, the podcast, you, you would know this. I said, when I met my husband, um, I, I came with my own understanding of what a relationship should look like you know, and what it should be. Immediately, yes, immediately he said to me, oh, this is not the bold and the beautiful. Whatever it is that you think you know, you're gonna need to unlearn it because we're gonna rewrite the script. Yes. Now, I, and I ha it was painful because immediately I thought, man, I could get away because this guy and I, and he said, no, I see you up. It's, it's not days of our lives. And then, I had then to go back to my previous relationship, which is then going back to your point, Madam Speaker, where you're mentioning uh, something along the lines of having to heal from past relationships before you move on to the next one. So I had to go back and see, why is it that I wanted it so bad to go on a weekend away with this guy, to be seen in places with this guy? What was missing in me? And what, it what, it what would it mean for me and my relationship to do that? And I found out that I, I just wanted to do it for people. You know, I wanted my friends to see that I was in a stable relationship and, 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 and. But no, you are green, do you have something to say? <laughs> do you need a mic? Do you, you need, need a, a mic, mic lady in the orange? Uh, there's a mic there. Oh, it's okay, you... like we said, this is a safe space. Can we if get a mic? Through it, it's definitely okay. 
Um, hi guys, my name hi. is Bella. And just to add my two cents into the conversation, um, I totally agree with uh, what you ladies are talking about in terms of um, communication um, and how we lack communication, especially in our relationships. Um, I personally have been in my relationship that I'm currently in for 10 years, but it's been 10 years on and off. And it's simply because as people we grow, we grow out of certain things and we grow into different things. And we can have conversations about, oh no, this is where we want to go. And, and we end up falling in love with the potential of where it could be or where it can go um, to the point where we lose sight of the reality of where we are now. To say, you know, we, we, we sit and we pillow talk and we talk about, oh, babe, we're going to buy this mansion. And, you know, you drive past a nice complex and you're like, yeah, no, this can be our dream house and, and, and. But we actually um, don't look at what it takes to actually reach um, um, that place in our relationships. And it's so important to actually step back and say, you know what, we met as two individuals um, that wanted to go to wherever we wanted to go in our lives. And somewhere along the line, there was a sharp curve, there was a, you know, detour and yana, but we need to adapt. And I think that's the most important thing to, um, especially because now we're, we're young people, we're woke, there's so many things that are now being spoken about that were not being spoken about previously. So I think communication is definitely something that um, we need to, as ladies, sort of say we are taking this upon ourselves yeah. to say when the moment you see that red building you're like no no sir nah this is not what we're doing <laughs> this is not what we agreed i didn't sign up for this you know um so yeah definitely communication is 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 there's so many aspects to communication but it it's it plays a vital role do you think you've fallen victim to that to not communicating and I, and I know uh, Babala also mentioned the uncomfortable conversations that we're scared to have and when you communicate these uncomfortable conversations your husband your boyfriend your partner will say I don't think you're doing this the same anymore yeah. but have you had have you almost felt like you've also been part of not being able to communicate in that sense Absolutely, like, um, I hope he doesn't watch this, but I no. kind of, <laughs> you will, you sorry, not laugh. sorry, <laughs> um, but I sort of feel muted um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way because I've been with him for so long, we've had so many experiences that when certain things aren't met that we, agreed, we had agreed to that, you know, by this time we would have achieved X, Y, Z, when those things are not met and I'm, I'm the person, I'm very impatient and I'm, I'm, I'm a, I always want to move around, I always want to grow. So when I feel like I'm stagnant, I, I don't think or I don't feel like it's easy for me to communicate that with him because it's like, okay, you need to, it, it, it's as if he's expecting me to sort of understand the situation currently where it is but it's like but this is not what we agreed to this is not what the plan was um and and I'll, I'll answer your question by saying i feel muted um because i'm a very opinionated person i'm someone who i speak my mind i'm i'm always um um oh sorry i'm always <laughs> i'm always um expressive of myself, where I am, where I want to go, where I want to be, etc. So it becomes very difficult because you, want, you don't want to say certain things to emasculate him or, or to, to take away him being a man, but then you also want to step up as a woman and say, no, if, if us agreeing to be in a certain place and we're not at that place yet, I want to take the wheel, allow me to take the wheel and to steer us into the direction that we agreed we would go in in the first place. I don't know if you know the saying that uh, if you're looking for an excuse, you will always find one. I think that is very applicable in relationships because when you're not compatible with somebody, there's only one solid excuse that we'll always use, and that is, I love him. Love conquers all. Uh, we will overcome because we love each other. And my sister here was saying that love is like a cigarette, right? And when that, all of that is gone now, what is left is you and this person that you're not compatible with, that you have to deal with for the rest of your life. Is that what you're willing to do? Can, can we just talk yeah. about this compatibility thing? You know, when you meet in a relationship, most probably maybe you, let me make an example of my first relationship. I was in university and this gentleman was working.
So clearly, the dynamics of that relationships are not the same. Of that relationship are not the same. But then I grew to a certain point where now I have a certain understanding and a certain level of a voice. Where now we are supposed to talk as equals, and then they find it difficult to talk as equals. And at some point, what we get to see now, you now rise to a point where you are above them. The level in which you see the world is no longer the same view from below. And it is not a bad thing, but what you then do is to, as you grow, you need to say, you need to remember now, things have changed. This is how I see things. And it becomes a very difficult problem where now one is growing and one is not. And the truth is, it also leads to you having difficult, different, different partnerships in your life, which is something that we get to see. And it is existing. Because if you have a partner that you used to go to clubs with every day, at a certain point, now you're an executive, you cannot be going to clubs every day. So they will want somebody to go there with. When you have to go and meet the president of whatever country, your partner no longer fits in this equation. Now you need somebody to go there with. So the dynamics of the change of the relationship, we need to stay very close in, which is why I always ask, do you have a relationship plan? And also those houses that you want to buy. But you don't have a plan to say from today, this is where we're going. From here, if this yeah. plan from today to this day didn't work, how are we going to rectify it? And so is a sexual plan. How many of us have got sexual plans? Five-year strategy in the same way you've Whoa. got a strategy for your business. Not a sexual plan. <laughs> you know what, what I do? I think the tricky thing, Neb, is that as an individual, I'm always learning something new about myself, right? I'm evolving every day. Mm. So having to have somebody tag along mm. and expecting them to synchronize with me while I'm evolving, it's a big challenge. Mm. It's a big challenge because people are resistant. Like, when I started speaking, that's not, that, that's not what that guy signed up for when he married me. He signed up for a wife who's going to be cooking for him every day, yes. you know. So now I'm standing on stages. I want to speak now. Yes. Like, that's not what I ordered. Yes. You understand what I mean? Yes. So now it goes back to what Tepi was saying to say, you, you always have to go back to the original plan to say, are we still on the plan? Yes. Is there some changes here and there? Are we happy with the adjustments to the plan yes. or not? But we don't do that. We yes. just say, no, it's fine. Yes. Love will conquer. Yes. Have you met time? Time is very important. Yeah. You know, I like the concept of time where you say we're still on the same time. Yeah. We are, now you are far ahead of me. And also us as individuals, you need to realize when you have stepped out of time when time is no longer yours, that this person has grown far apart and they've gone to a world that no longer belongs to you. Yes. I think the reason people struggle with time is we don't deal with things. We put away things. We box them there. And then when it's time for you to deal with that, there was time for you to deal with it, but you didn't deal with it. You yes. packed it away. And now you have to move on. But how do you move on from something that you didn't even deal with in the first place? Because people think that... Um, dealing with things or speaking openly means that you are immature. You know, people, people always say that, you know, I choose peace. Yeah. I choose, yeah. yeah. I prefer yeah. To, to, to look on the bright side. Like, listen, if it's not bright, it's not bright. If it's yeah. 12 o'clock midnight, it's 12 o'clock midnight. Uh, we don't There's see no darkness as, you yeah. don't know, we don't see darkness as we enter anyways. Uh, yeah. Quickly, because we're running out of time, but I don't, look, once again, time is just a concept again. <laughs> Have you met time? <laughs> Have you met time, Aya? <laughs> How did you rebuild yourself and your life when you came out of a relationship? There's a lot to rebuild there. Your confidence, finances, emotionally, knowing that you're moving on to the next, letting go of what was. How did you build and rebuild? And the mic will also rove around on how you rebuilt yourself in relationships. You are in a very vulnerable space when you come out of a relationship yeah. and we don't admit it because we always say to get over one, you get on another. But we get in there very injured, very hurt, very broken. How did you sort of build yourself? Okay, this is top government secret information <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that the gents are not supposed to be listening to, okay? Uh, literally, this, this works for me. I don't know about everybody else who's yeah. here, but I literally left my marriage two years before I filed for divorce. I stay yes. saying, honey. I stay saying. Two years. Leave before you leave. I stay saying. Yeah. So, so you, you have a game plan. I remember the last conversation I had with my ex. I said to him, would you, would you survive without me? Um, do you think I would survive without you? And that was not balancing. Ne? So now, as, as we are learning to, to, to survive 
individually while we're still together, that is us detaching. Mm. Like literally, when, when, I, when we got divorced, we were strangers. We, were, we, we even had a conversation about, you know, our open relationships. Like, we started seeing people while we were still... Yeah, that's how much of a brother and sister we were. Because we, we had gotten to that point. Yeah. How are you now? Now, I'm rolling, I'm bowling, honey. Hey, I'm rolling, I'm I mean, rolling. I mean, between you and him, how are things? Uh, it's still a bit awkward because he's getting to see a side of me that he knew that was in there, but he never thought it would come out the way it's coming out now. So I think I intimidate him a lot. Yeah. I intimidate him so much that I'll give an example. Let's say maybe he's going to pick up our son to take him to the doctor. When he comes back and he sees me maybe, maybe parked on the side of the road there doing my TikToks, he would just go past me, drop the kid, go, buy, then text me and say, okay, this is what uh, the doctor said. That's, that's how uncomfortable he is with me. You know, because... In as much as when we're still together, he would always say, listen, you're going far. Listen, you have a voice. Like, do you understand that which is like, that you carry? He would say that a lot, you know, when we're still together, but he never really thought I would implement it, I suppose, because that is, like right now, as, as things are, it's awkward for him because he can't, like this, so, 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 it's a big problem. But for me, I feel like it's, you know, because I, I always interact with his family members and all these other people, and in a very civilized way because the town that I'm staying in is a very small town but Yena personal I think because he realizes the lioness that has woken up that he knew all along that it was there it's just that it was sleeping it's kind of scary poetry poetry Uh, thank you very much what I would say Mina when it comes to any time when you are out of time there's a few things that are very central one self-knowledge You need to know who we are. The reason why we fall by the wayside is because we do not know who we are. And when anybody who meets you and you don't know who you are, they are going to teach you who you are going to become. And they will expect you to be that person. Once you know yourself, you love yourself. Remember all the five things that we've talked about. You need to know every single one of them. You need to fall in love with every single one of them. You know, I'm always making an example. I love summer days so badly because I look at my thighs and I turn myself on. That's how much, that's how much love I have for myself. So I don't really need anybody to love me. I have it for myself. Because of all the five things, they are a union. Because those things, when they are in sync and they are in harmony, they are a union. And you are literally in marriage with yourself. So where self-love, self-knowledge converges and self-respect as the third one. Respecting yourself and respecting that knowledge and the values that you've determined for yourself. So that when you go to people, you say, this is who I am and these are the values that I have. People will respect you for that. And so in that space, wisdom prevails. Now you have yourself. I always say you are like a cake. A human being, a complete human being is a cake. When you go to a shop, you will buy a cake with or without a cherry on top. But you cannot go to a a shop and they will give you a cherry and you say you came back with a cake. Be a complete cake with or without a cherry. Fall in love with yourself so badly that everybody thinks, who do you think you are? Because you know who you are. Take those lessons from anybody that you've met. The most beautiful lessons that make us the people that we are are painful lessons. I always make a simple example to say, with our children, with us, we used to be bitter and I would be like, I'm not going to do this because my mom is going to beat me. Yeah. But with our children, what do we say? Go and sit in a corner. Those most, most painful experiences, they are the ones that are supposed to build you to the level where you need to go. Your level of pain will determine your level of success. Your level of, of love will determine the level of fear that you have. Life is full of opposites. If you have felt pain, God just used somebody else to give you pain so that he takes you where you need to go. So understand that you've reached enough pain. Don't repeat the same mistakes because it means you're not growing. God will keep you at the same level. The, the next level should come with a better pain so that you can be elevated because it's the opposite that determines where you are. So when you take the lessons and you put yourself with the lesson, I promise you there is magic in that space. Yeah. But we need to integrate the five spaces that we've talked about because it is only in that space where you become a magician. Sure. 
I love that. I love that. Um, Aya has already looked at me. Why it's about concept of time? But I want to, to do this in rapping. And you know how we always do this. We always have last words um, right here on the podcast. And I don't want the last words to be ours first. I want the last words to be yours. You know, the comments that you have and how you feel about the conversations that we're having and how they feel to you. There's a roving mic. You can take a mic. Right behind you is a mic. There we go. So, so this is how it started. Your parting shots on this one? <laughs> uh, okay, my name is Messi. I'm going to talk about self-rebuild. In, in my case, what works for me? I hope the guy is not watching the show as well. <laughs> because I'm still here. So for my sake, I hope he's not watching. So what works for me in terms of self-rebuild is taking everyone out of the picture. This motto of saying, for the sake of my kids, yes. I'm not that girl. Yes. Because staying in a toxic relationship, saying in terms of the kids, you're traumatizing the kids in the long run. So with me, I took everyone out of the picture. Let it be parents saying, hey, you're a returned soldier, you'll disappoint us. What will neighbors say? It won't work for you, ladies. Take everyone out of the picture. If you feel like it's being selfish, then it's fine. Be selfish and think about yourself. Thanks. I love that. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, any more parting shots? And this is from sexual ties to rebuilding yourself after coming out of a relationship. San Bonan. Yeah, boy. Hey. 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 I will take on a topic here, rebuild. Yo, it's a hard one. I can relate so much. And thank you for the wonderful topic and the discussions, ladies. Um, so I'm in a journey of a rebuild. I lost my husband recently, Mr. Maboza. And it's tough, guys. It's tough. But I want to say another thing that will build you as a person, keep pain. When the pain hits your heart and it distracts your plan, it's something else. It's something that is so different. We talk about relationship, current relationships, and we talk about what happens, what should happen, what shouldn't happen, and we plan these things. We wake up knowing what you want. But losing a loved one, I says, I don't know. I'm in the journey still. I don't have answers. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm, what I'm doing is right or wrong. But yes, rebuild is key. Rebuild, coming back from it and saying I'm still in the fight, it's important. Yeah, I'll continue. You're in a good space now to sort of have this conversation. And um, you said you lost your husband through death? You know, so it is quite a, a different conversation in this case. And when I say different conversation, I mean to, to a breakup. Yeah. You know, having to, having to mourn someone yeah. is a completely different rebuild. Yeah. But uh, mourning the loss of somebody, when you do it for you. you. You forget about everybody else, like my sister had said there. Um, and you do it for you. You know that what you're doing is going to benefit you and those that you are pouring into their cups. And you have to remember that always, you have to make sure that your cup is not contaminated so that those who are depending on you to pour into their cups, if you have maybe kids involved, you have to make sure that that which you give to them is always as pure as you can. And also, at the same time, you don't have to be strong all the time. You don't have to to say you're okay all the time, even when you're not. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to, be, to roll in ashes when you feel like doing it because you understand that you're not gonna be rolling in ashes forever. There's gonna be a time for rolling in ashes and there's gonna be a time for you to get up and say, listen, like in this you see, you know, I've had enough of rolling in these ashes and I'm content and I'm happy with it and now I'm moving. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Kau, for raising this and thank you for coming. Kau is She's not my sister-in-law, she's my sister. Uh, Ka, we are doing it the right way. And we love you. That's what matters. You've got love, man. Yeah. You've got people around you who love you and who support you. And that, I think, is the biggest blessing. Take that blessing and accept that blessing. Any more last parting shots? There we go.
Um, I was just going to say, I know what broken feels like. And she oh. just, yo, she took it out of my mouth. But there was a saying that I came up with when I was at my, you know, when people say that you are, uh, you have to be okay now. It's been long enough. Aibo, whoa. <laughs> you have to forgive. Okay, I'm a Christian, but put it in that bin. I'll come fetch it when I'm ready, you know? So I realized that I came up with a saying that says you must dance on all your broken pieces. Just dance, make a party. If you want to roll, roll, you know? And then just accept that you're going to be built up the right way next. It's going to be the right way next, you know? So yeah, I just wanted oh, I to share that. that. Dancing yeah. with all your broken pieces. Um, do you have a last parting shot? There we go, Mike, that side. I know, Aya's probably saying, Arr! he's throwing at me in closer. Maruk Salai. Let's go. Um, okay, um, I'll be quick. Um, but the, the concept, okay, nake mupe edi ne? So, bari mosaru utwarati paka bo haleng. Right? Right? Uh, right? Basic, it's for translation. A woman holds a sharp knife in, at basically. The, on the edge. Like this. Yes. I hold it like this. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's it's so flawed because uh, we as, as women we're seen as imbogoto. Like no boo, I'm not. I'm seeing imbogoto nyikanda. You know, allow yourself as a woman to be vulnerable to say, you know what, I'm not always gonna have my ish together all the time, every time, like I'm expected to do because I have a pair of titties and a, you know, but. Allow yourself to, to, to be vulnerable and to be in your situation and to Im immerse, immerse yourself <laughs> to immerse yourself in your situation so that you come so. out of it on the other side ten times stronger than what you went in. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, wow. Parting shot, ladies on the table. I leave it to the guests now. Yeah. Today, yeah. Oh. I always say you have not lived until you have learned to dance in the midst of the storm. You have not lived. You go there when the thunder is, everything is going, and you say, because there's something that is inside me that nothing can switch off, I shall dance. What the caterpillar thought was the end of the world, the oh, master thought was yes. a butterfly. Yes. Yes. I love that. Um, you know what? People always expect you to heal from something and get back to normal. Um, there's a new normal every time when you go through something and you need to embrace that new normal and it's okay for you to be this new normal that nobody else understands in the room like people are gonna be waiting for five years for you to heal like my sister said there and they're gonna be waiting for you to go back to in my case maybe church and, and, and do things the way that I used to do them before but it's not it's not it's not gonna work if this glass is being broken right now, even if I rebuild it, it's okay, it's still gonna work, but it's not gonna be the same shape anymore, and that's okay, and, and it's okay for you to embrace the new you, not the broken, because people think that when you behave a certain way after you've been through something, it's because you're broken and you're broken forever, and that is not the case. You are broken and you rebuild, but this new you is not the same as the you that they knew before, and people wanna always take you back to that you that they knew for their own comfort, not for you. It's not benefiting you, this, new, this old you that they were you to go to but it, it it's benefiting them it's for their own benefit so always remind yourself that you don't always have to go back to a place where you've already elevated yourself or you've been elevated from to a new place it's okay to embrace the place that you are now yeah but you know healing just a one second you know i like this issue of we need to heal maybe we need to heal up to a certain point up not 100 percent you know i was involved in a car accident and this has built me so much to such an extent that I'm willing to say, God, if you want to take my other eye, just make me twice what I am. And I do not want to heal from this. I still wake up and I look at the mirror and I cry myself into a coma. And I don't want it because it takes me somewhere higher. So sometimes the healing is not what we need because it is a journey. And there are certain, certainly. There's power in your healing. Um, we touched on communication. My parting shot is be mindful of how you communicate with yourself. I've said this before. Um, how you communicate with yourself is very much a biggest contributor to how you come out oh, yes. of whatever it is that you are going through. Because sometimes we take for granted the little messages that we tell ourselves. 
be it positive or negative, but I would rather say, let's keep it positive. Mind how you talk to yourself. Mind how you communicate with yourself because that filters right in through how you heal. I get it, but that's what yeah. I, th those I are my passing shots. I love that. Um, ladies, thank you. Aya, yes, we're wrapping. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you to our panelists. You've been amazing. This is exactly how we wanted to wrap off the season and make sure that we are having these conversations so that ladies and even the gents who watch can be able to learn and can be able to, like you said, you know, let their pain and their healing be their power. And I think that's the most important part. Madam Speaker, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you we truly you. appreciate your presence. Babalwa, thank you. You've both been so formidable. Thank you. Um, you've both been so incredible to, to these, um, to, you know, to this conversation and I think that's important. All the ladies who are sitting here today, you could have been anywhere in the world and you chose to be here and have a conversation. Thank you. One, we apologize. Number two, thank you so much. We truly, truly appreciate your presence and I hope this was a very insightful conversation for you. Lushka, Cuisino, oh, Cuisino. Words cannot even start to express. You gave us your space and we appreciate that. Uh, Lushka is giving you guys lubes. That means let's start. You know, today, let's start those, those uh, bedroom conversations, okay? Grand Joe, Jen as well, thank you so much. Uh, Pure Minerals, which is the water that's on your tables. Those were nice to sponsored by Pure Minerals. And kindly sponsored for us, so thank you so much. All the guests, there's gift bags for you, just to say a token of our appreciation for you guys being here today. We're going to dance, we're going to have fun, we're going to continue drinking as well. Faye Faye's on the dais and she's the one that... Faye Faye, what? No, 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 I take that back. DJ Fika, what? Is, uh, is on the dais and a good friend of mine. I appreciate her presence as well. She's here to make us dance and to wrap up the season the best way we know how. Black Velvet is also going to be uh, on the dais today. So thank you very much. Have a fantastic one. To everyone who's watching, your support in the past two seasons have been incredible. This is how we wrap up the season. We'll be back next season. But just like that, comment, like, subscribe. We out here. Thank you.